like to read from the New King James Version, and I'll be reading from 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. It's a wonderful privilege to be bringing you the word of God today. 1 Peter chapter 2. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes, desire the pure milk of the world, that you may grow thereby. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, coming to him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious, you also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Thank you, our Father, for your word today. We pray, Lord, that you help every one of us bless your word into our hearts, into our lives, and may your world achieve the purpose for which it is coming forth today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The church, a spiritual house. The church, a spiritual house. One of the greatest testimonies we can have as people whose eyes have been opened by the Holy Spirit is a testimony where the individual says, I am a child of God. And he says it without hypocrisy. I have listened to some people claim to be children of God but because of what we know about them, I know that that claim was shallow, that claim was hollow, that claim was false, that claim was deceitful, that claim should not be taken even with a pinch of salt. I am a child of God. Born, born, born again. I am born, born again. Born, born, born again. I am born, born again. I am born of the Spirit and washed in the blood. I am born, born again. I am born of the Spirit and washed in the blood. I am born, born again. The most important, the most fundamental, the most foundational thing about every one of us is the new birth experience. The fact that a man who has been living in sin because he's been living outside Christ, outside God, outside the Holy Spirit, outside the Word of God, the man one day somehow by the ministration of the Word of God came to understand that he was lost that he was lost because he was outside Christ. That he was blind because he was outside Christ. That he was guilty because he was outside Christ. 
that he was condemned. You know, John chapter 3, 17, 18, because he was outside Christ. And that he was dead, Ephesians 2, 2, in trespasses and sins, because he was outside Christ. And that there was no one that could help him, only Christ. No one could deliver, only Christ. No one could save, only Christ. No one could recreate, only Christ. No one could bring a new creature, only Christ. He came to know. The man came to know, the woman came to know that as long as I am outside Christ, it will never be well with me, not on this earth and not in eternity. As long as I'm outside Christ, there is no relationship with God. There is no joy, there is no love, there is no peace. But then the person also would come to know that God's greatest desire is that we come to him. We come to him. And that's why Jesus said, all that come to me will never be cast out. He was ready to receive everyone. That's why the golden text of scripture says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, whosoever means whosoever, should believe in the Lord Jesus Christ shall never be lost. He will not perish, but he will have eternal life because that eternal life is in Christ. And when a man has had the word of God and there is a work of the Holy Spirit in him, in John chapter 16, from verse 8 to about in verse 11, we are told that it is the Holy Spirit that convicts us of sin. There is no way a preacher will preach for any man to be convicted of sin. There is nothing. When we preach, when we minister in any way, maybe through songs, through prayers, it is the responsibility of the Holy Spirit to take that ministration, go into the heart of a man, and then ensure that the purpose for that ministration is brought into fruition in the life of that person. He convicts, he convinces, he brings us to see ourselves the way God sees us outside Christ. He creates in us a desire to be saved, a desire to be set free, a desire to be born again, a desire to have the chains of the devil broken from our lives, a desire to be free from all the claims of the devil and every yoke of sin that is upon us. The Holy Spirit creates that desire. He creates that desire. He creates it. And when we have that desire, the Holy Spirit lets us know it is Christ. It is Jesus Christ alone. Why? Because there is no other Savior than Jesus Christ. There is no other name given among men whereby we may be saved than Jesus Christ. There is no other mediator than Jesus Christ. There is nobody that can do it. God has sent his son that his son may come and bring us together with God. And when we have known this, we now give our lives to Christ by the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Surrender to Christ. Yield yourself unto Christ. Give yourself completely unto Christ. Leave no space for the devil. Leave no place for demons. Leave no space for the flesh. Leave no place for the world system. Leave no place for hell. Give everything over to Christ. Here, of course, some people have a problem. They give themselves to Christ 40%. They give themselves to Christ 60%. They give themselves to Christ 80%. And when you give yourself to Christ 90%, who has the remaining 10%? Is it you? Is it the devil? When you give yourself to Christ 99.99%, who has the remaining 0.01%? Is it you? Is it the devil? Is it the world? Is it sin? Who has the remaining? 
Anyone coming to Christ should give himself completely. He should surrender himself completely. We used to sing a song that says, All to Jesus I surrender, all to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily. ourselves completely to the Lord. We have lots of problems today because people who say they have come to Christ have failed to surrender themselves completely to the Lord. They are reserving for themselves some percentage of their lives and so they cannot think straight, they cannot act straight, they cannot relate straight because this other percentage left outside Christ, we continue to be a problem. The Bible makes it plain that the carnal mind is enmity against God. The carnal mind cannot submit itself to the law of God. The carnal mind cannot bring itself under the Holy Spirit. Even if he wants to do it, he cannot. Because the Bible says, those that walk in the flesh cannot, they cannot, they cannot please God. Even if they wanted to. It will not be possible. So when a man says that giving his life to Christ, let it be total. Let it be complete. Let Christ actually be Lord. Let him be in charge. Let him be in control. Let him be the owner. Let him be in full possession of all your faculties. These are the things involved in salvation. And let every portion of scripture where the Holy Spirit has helped us to see what God hates. What God hates, you cannot love it. What God hates, you cannot embrace it. What God hates cannot be part of my life. What God hates, we will distance ourselves from it. What God hates will not be part of the characteristic of our lives. Everything that God hates, if you want to be a child of God, you also must hate what God hates. You cannot love what God hates. You cannot. There's nothing anywhere in scripture you read, God says, don't hate your brother. If anyone hates his brother, he is a murderer, he has no life abiding in him. You cannot love to hate. God says he doesn't want immorality of any type. People are living in adultery today in the church. People are living in fornication in the church. People are living in all types of immorality in the church. And not only that, in keeping with Romans chapter 1 verse 32, they have supporters in the church. You can't imagine what goes on in the church. Some people steal God's money in the church. But the Bible says, let him that stole, steal no more. Or some people steal God's money. People are involved in hypocrisy. They are involved in pretense. People do all types of things in their hidden places. Because they have told themselves, or the devil has told them, if Dr. Mira doesn't know, you are safe. What a terrible deceit of the devil. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 13, all things are naked and open in the eyes of him with whom we have to do. All things are naked and open before God. Ultimately, I am not accountable to any human being. Ultimately, you are not accountable to any human being. Ultimately, we are accountable to God. And this God to whom we are accountable is the omniscient God. See how we are sitting, see how I'm standing here. 
As I'm standing here, he knows everything about me. Am I a liar? Am I a cheat? Am I a thief? Am I an immoral man? Am I a deceiver? Am I a pretender? Am I a hypocrite? God knows everything about everything about my life. It's not a matter of the position you occupy. It's not a matter of your office. The higher you go in spiritual matters, the hotter it becomes for you. We were told when we were studying geography in secondary school those days, the higher you go, the cooler it becomes. But in spiritual matter, the higher you go, the hotter it becomes. A lot is expected of you. To whom much is given, much is also expected. Every pastor must understand that much is expected of him. Every pastor must understand that much is expected of him. Every pastor must understand that you cannot afford to mislead God's people. You cannot afford to be a hypocrite. You cannot afford to live in deceit. You cannot afford to live in stubbornness, in disobedience, in rebellion, in self-will, in pride, in haughtiness, in naughtiness of spirit. Because the pastor is supposed to be a man of God. The pastor is supposed to be a spiritual leader. The pastor is supposed to be able to say, be ye followers of me. The pastor is able to say, be ye followers of me as I am a follower of Christ. The pastor must not set evil example before people of God. No pastor must mislead the people of God. If any pastor does it, Jesus says, if you make any of these little ones to backslide, it's better for you that a millstone be hung around your neck and you be drowned, whether in the river or in the sea. No pastor, and I'm addressing pastors in particular, no pastor who has an understanding of the race we are running, the heavenly race and all that is involved, you cannot afford to mislead God's people in any way. You cannot afford to be wrong. You cannot afford to be crooked. John the Baptist, when he came preaching, he said, let the mountains be brought low. Let the valleys be filled. Let the crooked be made straight. Let the crookedness of people's lives, crooked people, crookedness, let people be made straight. Let the rough places be smoothing that with the sandpaper of the word of God and the movement of the Holy Spirit in our lives. A pastor is not an aguero. A pastor is not a ruffian. A pastor is not one of those people. A pastor is a gentleman, made a gentleman by the Spirit of God. A pastor is a man who is supposed to be filled with the Spirit and filled with the Word of God and show an example of this feeling every day. It's not a matter of whether you are a coordinator, a social leader, or all those things, uh, acting general superintendent, district superintendent, presbyter. Many years ago, we were in a council meeting. It was in the days of uh, Babe Zibo and his team. And one man was voted into the presbytery. And they were introducing him. So when they called him, he was coming. Then the fathers, one of the fathers who was having the microphone said, walk like a presbyter. They told him, walk like a presbyter. He was walking ordinarily before. When they said walk like a presbyter, he quickly did his shoulders like this and started walking. Then everybody started laughing. It is not your walking style. It is not your talking style. It is not all those things. It is your life. Ye shall know them by their fruit. Ye shall know them by their fruit. If I ask Amira now, this is your ADS who came here to talk, who is he? 
I won't, I won't care to him to tell me he's saying yes, he's pastoring the biggest church, he's doing this. No, no, no. Who is he? What do you read from his life? This or this secretary who came out here, who is he? What can you say about him? This or this researcher who was introduced at this researcher, all of us clap for him. Who is he? And the presbyters, who are they? I've gone through the council booklet. I've seen all the sectional leaders. I've seen my Bible school teacher, Reverend James Wedgeya. So who are they? The people are interested in knowing who we are. If our life agrees with what God has allowed us to be in the church, and remember that what God has allowed us to be does not say we are, we are rapturable. If God allows you to be the acting general superintendent, because you are sitting as acting general superintendent, does not say you are rapturable. You have to work at your salvation with fear and trembling. You have to work at your salvation under the Holy Spirit. Huh? I'm a presbyter, I'm a social leader, I'm a deacon, I'm ambassador of the kingdom. And so what? Where is your evidence? Where is evidence? People are interested in evidence. Let me tell you, when you go higher in church administrative hierarchy, and you do not have something to show for it, then the scripture will come true. Jesus said, Woe unto you, Bethsaida! Woe unto you, Chorazin! For if the great works done in you have been done in Sodom and Gomorrah, they would have repented a long time ago in dust and ashes. And he continued, he said, I tell you therefore, it will be more tolerable on the day of judgment for Sodom and Gomorrah than for you, Bethsaida and Chorazin, where these mighty works have been done. Everybody has to make a decision for himself. There is a broad way that leads to damnation. There is a narrow way that leads to life. Everybody makes his own choice. So when you have become a child of God, because you've come to Christ, there are expectations. Lay aside all malice. Lay aside all deceit. Lay aside all hypocrisy. Lay aside all envy. Lay aside all evil speaking. And many more, as we can see from all portions of scripture. It says, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the world, that you may grow thereby. It is in this same Peter, but second Peter chapter 3 that we read, that we should grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And no one can grow without the word of God. It is the spirit that gives life in John 6, 63. The flesh profited nothing. And Jesus said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirits and they are life. They are spirits and they are life. You remember in John, Matthew chapter 4, when the devil came, the first temptation was turn these stones into bread. And Jesus quoted quickly from the Old Testament. Man shall not live by bread they do, but by every word, every word that comes out of the mouth of God. You remember the key verse of the WM in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8? This word or this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. You will read it, you will meditate over it, you will learn to live according to it. You will not just man pulpit and be preaching what you don't know. Some people preach what they don't know. Some Sunday school teachers teach what they don't know. Some departmental leaders, they teach what they don't know. You will teach what you know, you will preach what you know, you will proclaim what you know, and you know it not just in your head, but in your heart and in your life. That's where you know. And Joshua was told, he said, when you read and meditate and keep to all the precepts, then you will make your way prosperous. You will prosper. 
It will be well with you. You will have a wonderful testimony. Nobody stops you. Nobody closes your way. Nobody disturbs you. Put away evil from your life. Put away evil from your thoughts. Put away evil from your heart. If you say you are saved, if you say you are a child of God, if you say you are running the heavenly race, let the word of God control you. Assemblies of God says, we believe in the Bible. It is God's way, God's guideline for our lives, for everyday faith, what we believe, and conduct, how we behave. How do I be behave towards my wife? According to the Bible. How do I behave towards my staff? According to the Bible. How do I behave towards my children? According to the Bible. It's not what another person behave to my leaders? According to the Bible. It is the Bible that should guide us. The B I B L E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B I B L E. The B I B L E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B I B L E. The B I B L E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B I B L E. The B I B L E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God. The B I B L E. You say that newborn babes deserve the sincere of the world, that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted <laughs> that the Lord is gracious. Then bring the evidence of it, bring the proof. Somebody should be tired of a church where people no longer respect the word of God. Somebody should be tired of any gathering called church where people no longer give honor to the scriptures. Somebody should move away from anywhere called church where when you read the word, when you quote the word, when you refer to the word, when you try to guide people by the word of God, they turn around to hate you. They hate you. There are people today, when you read the word and teach the word, they get angry. They're in the congregation. They claim they are saved. They say they are this and that. They get angry with the word of God. How can a man get angry with the word of God? Break thou the bread of life, Lord, unto me. As thou didst break the loaves beside the sea, beyond the sacred page, I see the Lord, my spirit yearns for thee. bread of life, Lord, unto me, as thou didst break the loaves beside the sea, beyond the sacred beach, I see for the holy the world. You come to Jesus as the living stone. He is the foundation. First Corinthians 3, 10, 11. He is the foundation. 
We read from the book of Ephesians chapter 2. He's the chief cornerstone. Rejected indeed by men. He came unto his own. His own received him not. But as many as received him. Rejected indeed by men. But chosen by God. Chosen by God. And precious. You also as living stones. You and I as living stones. You and I as living stones, all of us as living stones on that living stone. We are being built up a spiritual house. We all. This building in which we are is a magnificent building. And anybody who comes in here and sees it, you give glory to God, you know the name is Glory Land. You praise God and you appreciate all the brethren. I've read the our uh, district superintendent's report, all the brethren who have contributed and are still contributing and are yet to contribute. This building is magnificent. But look, we're talking of another building, a spiritual house. You and I. Spiritual house. The temple of the Holy Ghost. This building is the house of God. But there is a greater way in which you and I are the house of God, the address of God, the residence of God, where God lives, where people should go to and see God. This is my life and your life. That is the challenge. Wherever we are, people should see God. Know ye not, know ye not, ye are the temple. Know ye not, know ye not, ye are the temple. Know ye not, know ye not, ye are the temple. Ye are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Know ye not, know ye not, we are the temple. Know ye not, know ye not, we No, you know, no, you know, we are the temple, oh yes, we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. No, you know, no, you know, I am the temple. No, you know, no, you know, I am the temple. No, you know, no, you know. Jesus, 
is sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus, I love him more and more. Jesus saves and keeps me, and he's the one I'm waiting for. Every day with Jesus, he's sweeter than the day before. You see, your melodies of praise, Every day with Jesus, he's sweeter than the day before. In the chorus side, every day with Jesus, I love him more and more. Jesus saves and keeps me, and he's the one I'm waiting for. Every day with Jesus, he's sweeter than the day before. More and more, more and more. Oh, to love the Savior more and more. More and more, more and more. Oh, to love the Savior more and more. For thy goodness, O oh Jehovah. I will love thee more and more. Let the Holy Spirit guide me. Give me strength to love you more. More and more. More and more. Oh, to love you, Savior, more and more. More and more. More. Savior, more and more. You are being built up a spiritual house. The Holy Spirit is in charge. The Holy Spirit is in control. The Holy Spirit owns you. The Holy Spirit is in possession. The Holy Spirit is all and in all. It is not you. It is about the Holy Spirit. A holy priesthood. A spiritual house. For the Holy Spirit. A holy priesthood. A holy, 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 because people don't care for holiness anymore. Holiness unto the Lord is a watch, word and song. Holiness unto the Lord. As we are marching along, sing it, shout it, loud and clear. Holiness unto the Lord, now and forever. Holiness unto the Lord is a watchword and song. Holiness unto the Lord, as we are marching along, sing it, shout it, loud and clear. Holiness unto the Lord, now and forever. We worship the thrice holy God, holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, and in the morning our song shall rise to Thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in free person. The Holy God, the Lord Jesus asked a question. He said, The prince of this world comes and he has nothing in me. He asked the people, Which of you can convict me of sin? No. The Holy Spirit, not the evil spirit, the Holy Spirit, not demons. 
You are the eyes of the Holy Spirit, not the spirit of this world system. You are the tabernacle, the temple, the residence, the address, the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, not the evil spirits, not those demons. They have nothing to do with you. You are a child of God. And you should prove it. You should prove it always. Holy priesthood, holy pastors, holy sectional leaders, holy presbyters, holy superintendents, holy, set apart from evil, set apart unto good and holy and acceptable purposes. That is whom we are supposed to be. Holy pastors, holy pastors' wives, holy deacons, holy ambassadors of the kingdom, holy, holy people, holy people, holy people, remove from iniquity, remove from the wickedness of the devil, free from the chains. Oh, that man who praise the Lord. Oh, that man who praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men, to the children of men. He has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of fire in sunder. He has broken the gates of brass and cut the bands of iron in sunder. A spiritual house, living stones, spiritual house, holy, holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices, spiritual sacrifices, spiritual sacrifices. In Genesis chapter 4, two people were offering sacrifices. The firstborn son offered the sacrifice, it was not accepted. The second one offered, it was accepted. And Jesus has come to offer the final sacrifice. So we don't need to carry sheep and goat and lamb to go and sacrifice today. But we ourselves offer ourselves now. We offer ourselves now. We offer ourselves now. Jesus made a great sacrifice and they put it in a hymn in the sacred songs and solos. I don't know when last you had that hymn, but you should hear it today. I gave my life for thee, my precious blood I shed, that an eternity of joy thou mightest know. I gave my life for thee. What hast thou given for me? I suffered much for thee. In weariness and woe, that an eternity of joy thou mightest know. I suffered much for thee. What hast thou done for me? My father, so on high, my For wanderings clear and cold, I suffered much for thee. I left it all for thee. What hast thou left for me? Living stones, spiritual house, holy priesthood, spiritual sacrifices that comes by the Spirit that have the acceptance of the Holy Spirit, 
sacrifices that have the approval of the Holy Spirit. All sacrifices with the approval of the Holy Spirit, not just with the approval of men, acceptable unto God. Shall we bow our heads today? Have your way, oh. have your way, have your way, oh. have your way, have your way. persuaded, O oh God, that the spirit of the living God will cause your word to be, the purpose of your word to be accomplished in our lives. Because you have called us, O oh God, to be a spiritual house. Because you want to inhabit us, O oh God. You have called us as, O oh God, holy priests, that we might offer unto you acceptable Worship through Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that your word will help us. Your word will help us to grow from one grace to another grace. To grow from one higher ground to another higher ground. Until we have become the men and women that you have desired us to be. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. So